name is Sibatlam Tongana and I'm the food editor for Drum Magazine, which means I literally cook for a living. In the next few weeks, you and I, yes, that means you and me, will get to meet some of the most famous faces in Mzansi. We'll hear what they love to eat or not eat and learn to cook their favorite recipes, but with a little bit of a twist. a television personality and a great cook, even if I have to say so myself. I do enjoy other people's cooking and uh, I believe that anything that one starts can probably be improved by someone else. My pizza salad. Uh, I'm told that uh, I'm going to experience a different twist on it and uh, I'm looking forward to it actually. Healthy food doesn't have to be so boring. And who better to cook with today than Miss Jerry Halston? Hello. I love a varied diet. I enjoy lots of protein in my diet, very uh -huh. few carbohydrates. Uh, I travel a lot, so I've got to watch what I eat. Um, but when I'm home, I love to experiment. Okay. So um, you put a bunch of ingredients in front of me, and I'm going to make something happen. Terrifying it. Uh, there we go. I'm going to jerryfy a meal. Why not? Cool. I did this wonderful shoot with Jerry once and she gave me this beautiful pizza salad. Instead of a pizza base, she had lettuce leaf. Everybody loves it, but the fact is, how many times can you eat a pizza as a woman and not feel it going to your thighs? Mm. So, uh, one of my other problems is, because I'm hypoglycemic, I find that I have to lessen the amount of carbohydrate and therefore flour that uh -huh. I take into my diet. So, I figured that there must be another way for my family to eat the pizza but without the base. Without the base. Now, okay. I think I might have told you previously in my first life that I also cannot stand salad. So it's because of my dislike. Exactly. It's a it's a black <laughs> thing. It's a black thing. Just, you know, the whole rabbit food before you eat real food. I don't get it. So what happened was I tried to figure out how do I get the greens into our diet but mm -hmm. make it fun. Mm. So, and enjoyable. So, so what you do is you go, kids, pizza, salad. <laughs> <laughs> And you serve it up, and that's really where this idea came from. I'm going to give it a little bit of a twist. <laughs> you used a balsamic pomegranate yeah, mix. Infused the balsamic, two together. Yeah. But I'm going to use a very nice tomato pesto dressing. I love a tomato pesto. And lots and lots <laughs> of sausages. Okay. You will chop these veggies, and I will start with my dressing. Okay. We have red cabbage here. We've got some beetroot that we've already cooked. And then we also have your artichokes over here. Let's get going. You add our tomato pesto, and then you add the olive oil. A pinch of salt. Mom is a diabetic and for her it was really hard to cook food that she would like, that we would also like. How, right. So how does it work with you? Well, I don't have the time to cook two meals. Two meals. Um, I really just take things that the family would normally eat and instead of adding the caster sugar or adding um, some type of, of sweetening like a honey or whatever, uh -huh. I would simply add something else. Okay. If a recipe is honey, I would put my diabetic jam, for example. Okay. So I've just found different ways in which oh. to still um, incorporate myself into what the family eats. And, mm. and, and I think the restriction should be on my part and not their part. Mm. However, eating with me keeps them healthy too. Mm. Um, I don't find it restrictive. Oh, look at this. This is fantastic food. I mean, the colors, the vibrancy, the flavors of every one of these combined with those delicious sausages. And I want to know what you've got. 
in that bowl because I often only use chorizo and of course it's a great Spanish sp uh, sausage. Which is this one? This yes. Is the original one. I've got a Holland smoked sausage. Oh, wonderful. And this is a cabanossi, very similar to your salami. It's got a lot of fat in it, mm. but it's, um, it's very, very flavorsome. I really enjoy that too. What we're actually going to do to remove some of the fat is to dry fry it. Fantastic. And we've got a very nice Spanish sausage as well. So I'm a meat person. Support the protein farmers. get time to do so many campaigns, so many projects. There has to be some pre-planning and some of that pre-planning needs to happen in your head. So you need to know what you have in your cupboards, you need to know what you have in your fridge, you need to know what to get on your way home from work really, really quickly that mm -hmm. you can throw together. And I've certainly discovered and I will defy anyone who tells me that cooking isn't a great fast sport, mm -hmm. that you can get home and within 20 to 30 minutes your family can in fact be sitting down to a nutritious meal. This is what beetroot is going to do to your hands. So ideally, you need to get this off. As Otherwise, fast it will stain. It will stain your beautiful nails. You like? <laughs> Please. Who doesn't love a great sausage? It's one thing we do well in South Africa also is, is sausage. sausages. Mm. Now we call this dry frying. What you do is you don't add any oil to your pan, just heat it up until it's quite hot. It's actually good for bacon as well. So you don't need to add any oil to your bacon. One of the most delicious parts of the meal is gonna be the fat left behind. <laughs> all the oil we're losing when we're dry frying. And remember, we didn't add any oil. And you see, we're going to drain that. Now here's something that'll get the kids running to the kitchen for pizza salad. Pizza salad. <laughs> and now, the layering of the pizza will help you with that. Absolutely. Which leaves do you usually use? Oops. I love romaine lettuce, uh -huh. um, but I do love herbal lettuce as well. Actually use whatever lettuce appeals to your palate. And then you just sprinkle the red cabbage. Oh, this looks so pretty already. Some artichoke hearts. Is this the type of food you'd actually have at home? This is our typical kind of, of uh, what we call at home, grazing food. Uh -huh. Sitting in front of our computers around dinner time or uh, watching a DVD. We don't have television in our home. It's part of our, our wholesome um, lifestyle. No TV at all, even for the kids. Uh, kids don't need TV, they need stimulation. Did you hear that? Kids don't need TV. <laughs> Sound like a real mother. Kids don't need TV. So then what do you guys do? Read a lot perhaps? Oh, we read and we talk a lot. And no read and talking in a lot. my house. That's the sad thing if you're a kid in my house. <laughs> so, what's going on? <laughs> nothing. Yeah, tell me about that nothing, nothing. that's going on. No. <laughs> oh, that looks good. I'm going to grab the cheese for you. Okay. When those kids come down the stairs, all they're seeing is meat and cheese. <laughs> Look at you. You're about to put that in your mouth, you naughty girl. Got me. <laughs> <laughs> Just delicious. And here we go for our pizza salad. is normally a vegetarian dish uh, simply because I try and accommodate everybody um, as best I can but also it's not a healthy meal it's a decadent it is fattening it is heartwarming it's everything an African mouth 
change your taste. <sighs> now for the main dish. Yes. I know you love your patina ravioli. I do. Have you ever made your own pasta? When we've got time, it is great fun. It's really about being able to add your own touches to your ravioli. Yes. Mm. That's the nice thing about it. Yes. And I know she loves salmon. Yes. I've decided to have a salmon and cream cheese ravioli. I eat salmon three, four times a week. It keeps you young, but don't eat it cooked. Have it raw. It's, I promise you, 10 years off your face, guaranteed. I'm gonna make the dough for the pasta. Yes. It's very easy. One cup of flour, mm -hmm. an egg, and a bit of oil. Awesome. And a pinch of salt. My mother used to make bread when I was growing up. And uh, I used to love making bread with her on a Sunday morning. This is gonna, it's it reminiscent of my childhood. There's something about playing with dough that is quite pleasing. My mother used to say, if you're angry, <laughs> make a dough and just go. And just pound at it. it. Knead it, knead it, knead it, knead it. Then you go back and you're totally All fine. All poise. If you do your own pasta, it cooks much quicker than your traditional pasta yeah. that you get in the stores. Yeah. So you must always remember that otherwise you'll have a very bad pasta. So you mustn't overcook it. Cooking times is something that's very important with pasta. Mm. When I was growing up, it was always a little too soft. Soft. <laughs> I think with all of us. I really I think, don't with think all of us. I don't think our parents quite understood the principle of al dente. What was that at the time? <laughs> it's so nice having someone else for a change during the kneading. Hey, and if you have an extra hand and they know how to do the job, why not? We have to chill this for at least 30 minutes or an hour. I actually made one last night. Just for you. Of course she did. <laughs> Here's one that is nicely chilled in the so, fridge. So while I've been putting in the elbow grease over here, you've had a secret weapon in the fridge all along. We have to show people how to make it. <laughs> and now the real fun begins. Come, let me show you this. This is a pasta machine for those who might not know. It's got this button over here and it's got seven notches and you must start from seven till one. It goes from thick to thin. We take a bit of flour, otherwise it will stick. Right. This is hard labor. It's very nice. <laughs> okay. Because this doesn't have a nice shape, we're going to fold it into three. It will give it a beautiful, even shape. And we go again. We go to a lower level notch. I can imagine if I had kids, I'd really enjoy doing this with my children. <laughs> well, they'd have flour all over them. I think that would be the beauty. <laughs> what you can also do is add some herbs. Like, for instance, we're using chives today. When I first folded it, yes. you just add chives and it gives such a beautiful colour. Yeah. I've made one last night and when it comes, it comes out perfectly oh, like that's this. that's beautiful. It's really about the rolling and just don't forget to do the notches. <laughs> You're having fun. It's really fun. And now for the last time, There we go, <laughs> finished. Looks terrific. So you make your markings, one, two, three, and that's where the filling goes. I know you love your spoons, and this is one of my favorites, cream cheese. I have a thing for the daintiest little, sometimes antique, sometimes new, but always unique, uh -huh. little spoons, and I have quite a collection of them in the house, actually. But no one uses them. Oh, just for display. <laughs> hey, just for display. Hey. Ah. They're some of my favorite little things. Oh, yum. Salmon, your favorite. Two of my favorite things together. Egg white, I call it the food glues because it will glue everything together. And we nicely fold this. Fold it. Ah. I like that. And then we have a big cutter 
and you want to make it in the center of the filling so it makes a perfect round right. shape. But if I don't have that shape, I can use a pizza cutter, right? Yeah. I mean, I can... If you have a perfect hand, you can use a knife. You can also make this into nice squares. It's this easy. Homemade ravioli. Mm. I've already had my water boiling and I made some more. As Dead. Well. So we have a double portion, good. Just for me Cause, and you. Because, you know, this is a half portion for the Jerry. Oh, this one. <laughs> this is a half portion. Do you eat that much? Oh, it, you know what? Pasta is probably my one complete indulgence. Are you waiting for my portion to come over there? That's it. Tonight we feast like kings. Do mine slightly differently. Mm, that's <laughs> fine. A pizza cutter. Also, the great thing about it is that if you're making a vegetarian option, you can cut it differently and you can easily identify which oh, one is true. vegetarian, which one is not. That's very true. What different filling for that matter? Any yeah. other different filling? This is Jerry's twist. And this is Steve's <laughs> twist. Boiling water. We're putting in our ravioli. It must boil for about five to eight minutes and no more than that. In the meantime, let's make the sauce. What are we having as a sauce? It's a reduced cream with chives. Okay. Very simple. No oil, no butter, nothing. As bad as, as cream is for you, it brings out flavors like nothing else. I think that cream can make a tire taste good. A tire? <laughs> smells great. And now the tasting. Oh, I'm so ready. You taste yours, and I'll taste mine. Oh, oh okay. it's like that, is it? <laughs> That's before the sauce. That's some good pasta. I want all of that on the plate with the sauce right now. Right now. reasons I take no sugar. I, eat, I live a, a sugar-free lifestyle and, uh, and it's interesting because of course one of the things a girl must have is chocolate. So uh, I'm hoping that the sweets um, appeal to my hypoglycemic uh, sweet tooth. Nothing fits my favorite which is dessert oh. and we're making crepes. We are. With chocolate. Is it chocolate that I can eat? It's chocolate that she can eat. It's actually sugar-free. Oh, wonderful. And then instead of using strawberries, I thought we must use pomegranate. I've actually never cooked with pomegranate. Before? Never. It's, it's really easy. I'm going to make that better for me. I'll do that for It's you. just mixing everything together and that's it. Crepes, very simple. You uh, put some flour in a bowl, add your egg. Add your milk and keep that all liquidy. Crepes looks very much like your pancakes, but the difference is that they're much thinner. And usually the better, it has to be smooth. Whereas maybe with the, with the pancake, you can get away with one or two lumps there. But with this one, it has to be really smooth. So I want to see you beating. I'm, I'm in there. One thing people always ask me is how to melt your chocolate. You can use the microwave, but it's a bit tricky because just another two, three seconds, you yeah, messed you it up. Mess it up so, so I'm going to show you the traditional way. You must always have your water boiling, and then you must switch it off. Then you put, it can be an enamel one as well, or a glass bowl. 
You put the chocolate in. You don't want your bowl to touch the water. You must make sure that the water level is quite low. Mm. The steam actually melts the chocolate. One thing about this chocolate, because it's not real sugar, what happens is that they've got a very laxative effect, so you can't really have too much of it. Little bits of everything and small portions and life can be long and beautiful. But so I'll way. have a little bit of chocolate today. I didn't use any butter or oil. I used my cooking spray. I have a little bit. I spread it over. This is about two minutes and no more. Don't worry about that first crepe, okay? Your first crepe is always your test crepe. Because we've only done for two minutes on, on the one side, the other side is really quick, 60 seconds and no more. I'm counting. Now I'm at 10. Now I'm done. <laughs> and here we go. There's our oh. first one. I, I love doing them because you can do them so quickly and at any time. They, they're really quite quick. Look, this one is already going to... Oh, and we're not, we're not flapping it. Okay. No, thank you. Not a pancake, it's a crepe. Probably the most frustrating for a parent would be as the pancake comes out of the oven. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> And with mum, you know, with five of us, she wouldn't know which one of us had our one. Oh. That is and beautifully golden brown. That looks edible. When's eating time? Isn't this oh. You can make it in any shape, actually. It doesn't have to be the rolled one. Mm. I can't wait. And tell me what you think. Mm. Taste five. Mm. Mm. I wish you can actually taste this. Mm. This is very good. Well, it, it was part of your recipe. I just give it a little bit of a twist. You twisted my arm to come into the studio with you today, and I have to say it's a twist I like. And I'm so glad. <laughs> now, can I have more of your, mm. your crepes, please? Can, can I make you one? Please. You're always doing all the cooking. Let me do something for you. How sweet. It will be. This is Pekka Rice's No Dinner Recipe. China, a land of mystery, legend and rice. Today, we're going to make a Cantonese rice. And it's perfect for leftover Speco Jasmine rice, which is naturally fragrant and was voted best rice in the world in 2009. You will also need Chinese sausages, dark soy sauce, fresh chili, spring onions, fish sauce and beaten eggs. You saute your Chinese sausages for a few minutes, add your beaten eggs, scramble it up. And it's just like making scrambled eggs. Add your fish sauce, the soy sauce, your jasmine rice. Continue stirring and you add the rest of your ingredients. Spring onion, chili. And voila! With Speckle Rice as your cooking partner, you'll have the perfect rice for every occasion.